Okay, fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the junior grand finals of our 2020 Spell Pundit National Spell EV. This is our fourth year hosting, and we're really excited to crown this year's Spell Pundit Junior Champion. I'm Shoba Dasri, I'm one of the MCs today, um, one of the co founders of Spell Pundit, and I was a three time semifinalist in the National Spelling Bee as well. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Shreyas Parab. Uh, I'll also be emceeing with Shoba today, and I competed in the National Spelling Bee in 2014 and 2015. So today's grand finals, the spellers are the top 16 out of hundreds of spellers who registered for the competition this year. Our participants are some of the top spellers, fourth grade and younger, and have already completed two rounds of competition to get to this point. A 50-question written test, which I'm sure was not easy to get through, and a semifinal round. Yes, so congratulations to all of the spellers today for making it this far, and we're really excited to see how everyone performs today. And before we start the actual B, we're just going to go over some of the rules really quickly. So rule number one, spellers, you must keep your primary and secondary videos on for the entire time that you're participating in the competition. And if you do misspell your word, stay in the B until the end of the round. And then at that point, we will announce your name. And at that point, then you can leave the competition and turn off both your primary and secondary devices. Another rule is that we ask that all parents, siblings, and friends leave the room that the speller is in and that they can watch the, the B on the Spell Pundit Facebook page. So if there's any parents, siblings, or friends in the room, if you could just take a minute to get out and uh, watch from the comfort of some other room in the in the house. Every for every word, you'll spellers, you'll be asked to spell a word. And if you misspell that word, you'll be eliminated. We'll have you stay until that until the end of the round. Make sure you keep both your devices on. And then after the round, you can watch the rest of the competition on the Spell Pundit Facebook page. Spellers will have two minutes to spell a word. And in the last 30 seconds, our timing judge will give you a warning, and the speller cannot ask any more questions in the last 30 seconds. OK, this rule is really important, so pay attention. Spellers, when you are spelling, your hand must be in the frame and visible to the judges. So can everyone just show me what that looks like? Amazing. OK, so you can do this. You can do this. You can write on your hand, whatever is good for you. But just make sure that we can see your hands at all times. OK? Awesome. And if judges don't see your hands, they will ask you. Um, they'll ask you in the middle of your round. Another really important rule is that as you're spelling, if you want to restart spelling your word, no worries. Just make sure you make it clear to the judges that you're going to be restarting. Yep. And if you're going to ask a question about roots, you're allowed to do that. Just make sure that you give us the root, you give us the definition of that root, and you give us the language of origin that that root comes from. And then our roots judge, Sharab, will let you know if you're correct, if you're on the right track, or if you're incorrect. And if you want to take a break at any point, please make sure to take a break only after your word in that round or when we give breaks between the rounds. Um, and you must leave your videos on during your break, so even though you're not there. Awesome. If there are any technical issues, then judges may choose to give you a different word if you didn't spell incorrectly prior to that technical issue. So if your video goes, or sorry, if your Wi-Fi goes out or anything like that happens, Judges will just sometimes, in, in certain cases, judges may choose to just give you a different word for that round. And another important thing is that you're not allowed to get any external help. We know that it took a team of people, a village of people, to get you here today, and we just want to see how you perform. So make sure to not use any additional help from things like a phone, an additional computer, or another person. Great. And last rule here, if there are any appeals, then parents, you may come into the room at that point and send the appeal through the Zoom chat to the Zoom meeting host. We want that appeal, send that appeal as soon as possible, but before the end of the round so that judges are able to then deliberate between rounds. Right, any decisions that are made by judges at that point are final. Now, uh, let's introduce some of our judges for today's bees. Um, our pronouncers today are Namneeth Murali, if you want to wave hi. Yeah, yep. hi. Yep, perfect. Um, and then another pronouncer is Shruthika Padi. Do you want to wave hi as well? That way they know who you are. Perfect. So a little background on Navneet. Navneet was a two-time Scripps National Spelling Bee finalist and then was the champion of the 2020 Spell Pundit National Spelling Bee. And he's currently a junior in high school. 
Our other pronouncer today is Shrithika Padi. Shrithika was one of the Octo Champs at the Scripps National Spelling Bee in 2019. So her and eight other, or her and seven other people won. And she's also been a judge for the Spell Pundit Bee for four years now. And she's currently a senior in high school. Now, our roots judge today might seem and look a little bit familiar. His name is Sharav Dasari. He participated in the Scripps National Spelling Bee in 2016 and 2017, and he placed fourth in the National Spelling Bee in 2017. He's one of the co-founders of Spell Pundit, and he shares a last name with Shroba because he's her brother, um, and he has been organizing the bee for four years. All right, and last but not least, our bell judge today is Simone Kaplan. Simone was a two-time Scripps National Spelling Bee finalist, and she's also judged the Spell Pundit Bee for three years, and she's currently a junior in high school. So we have a super experienced panel of judges and are in very, very great hands today. Oh, spellers, are are we ready to start? Everyone's ready? Yep. All right, yes. fantastic. Then with that being said, let's get started. Hey, can everyone see the screen? Okay, perfect. Uh, so first up we have speller number two, Pervik Bayergat Gauda. He's hailing from the beautiful city of Olathe, Kansas, and he is in the fourth grade. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Okay, uh, and could, could you keep your hands visible? Okay, uh, let's get started. Yeah, your for, your word is primo. Primo, can you please uh, have all the information? Sure. The word is primo, no alternate pronunciations. The word is a noun. It's Italian from Latin. The definition is the first and principal part in a piano duet. A sentence is Jason's piano recital piece included a particularly full and complex primo part. The word is primo. Primo. Are there any homonyms? None listed. We generally don't answer that question. Uh, primo. P-R-I-M-O. -E primo. That is correct. Next up, speller five. Next up is speller five, Avyut Siosh. He comes from Bentonville, Arkansas, and is a second grader. Hi. Hi. Your word is Andes. Could you repeat the word? Mm -hmm. Andes. Andes, am I pronouncing it right? We generally don't answer that, but if I hear an incorrect pronunciation, I'll let you know. Andes. Can I have the definition of the word? Sure. Andes refers to a mountain range in Western South America. Andes. Andes. A N. D I E S Andes. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is A N D E S. Good job. Thanks for coming. Up next, we have Speller 11. Speller 11 is Adarsh Ven Kanagari. He is hailing from the beautiful city of Acton, Massachusetts, and he is currently in the fourth grade. Oh, hi. Okay. Your word is decree. Decree, may, all the, may, may I have all the information? Sure. The word is decree or decree. The word's a noun. It is Middle English from French from Latin. It's an official order issued by someone having legal authority. Everyone in the audience clapped and cheered when the president signed the decree on equal rights. The word is decree. Decree. D E C R E E. Decree. That is correct. Thank you. All right, our next speller is Divik Singh. He is from Atlanta and is a fourth grader. 
Speller 12. Hi. Hi. Your word is sizem. Sizem. Can I please have a definition? Sure. Shaking and vibration of the surface of the earth resulting from underground volcanic or tectonic activity. Can I have a part of speech, please? The word's a noun. Can you repeat the word, please? Mm -hmm. Sizem. Sizem. S I E S U M, sizem. I'm sorry, it is incorrect. The correct spelling is S E I S M. Good job. And the next speller is speller 23, Gia Bovsar. She hails from Prairie Village, Kansas, and she's currently in the fourth grade. Hi. Hi. Your word is phyton. Um, phyton, can I have the definition, please? Sure. Phyton refers to the smallest part of a stem, root, or leaf that when severed may grow into a new plant. Phyton. Um, does this come from the Greek root phyte, meaning plant? Yes. Phyton. P-H-Y-T-O-N, phyton. That is correct. All right, our next speller is Shashank Palla. He's from Springfield, Ohio, and is in fourth grade. Your word is philia. Um, can I please have all the information? Sure. The word is philia. It's a noun. It's new Latin from Greek. It's a positive feeling of liking or love of friends. And the Greek language distinguishes the three, the three, sorry, the different kinds of love as philia, eros, and agape. Philia. Philia. P H I L I A. Philia. That is correct. The next speller is Speller 41. Speller 41 is Cushy Gaudimakula. She hails from Morrisville, North Carolina, and she's currently in the fourth grade. I'm ready. Your word is diglot. Can I have the definition? Sure. Diglot refers to a bilingual book or other word, other work. Diglot. Diaglot. No, the word is diglot. 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 Um, can I have the part of speech? Mm hmm It's a noun. Diglot. Can you use it in a sentence? Sure. The diglot in Hindi and English is certainly a repository of information for the younger generation. Diglot. Can I have the language of origin? Sure, it's Greek parts, from Greek parts. Can you repeat the word? Diglot. Diglot. D-I-G-L-O-T, diglot. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is Ansh Tharji. He's from Edison, New Jersey, and is in fourth grade. Hello. Hi. Your word is hertz. Hertz. May I have all word the information, has... please? Sure. The word is hertz. It can also be pronounced hertz, hertz, or hertz. Uh, it's a noun. 
it comes from a German meme. It's a standard unit of frequency equal to one cycle per second. And in a sentence, it's gamma waves are the fastest brain waves with a frequency between 38 and 80 hertz. Hertz. May you repeat, I mean, may you repeat the word again? Sure. The word is hertz. H. U R T S hertz. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is H E R T Z. The next speller is speller number 59, Caden Sirarok. He hails from Ulysses, Texas, and he's currently in the fourth grade. Your word is thesis. Thesis. T-H-E-S-I-S. -E thesis. That is correct. Our next speller is Samhita Gajala from Waxhaw, North Carolina, and she's also in the fourth grade. Hi. Hi. Could you keep your hands up? Thanks. Your word is Largo. Largo. Can I have all the information? Sure. The word is pronounced Largo. It can also be pronounced Largo. Uh, it is an adverb. It's Italian from Latin. Used as a direction in music, it means in a very slow and broad manner. In a sentence, the music director explained to the students that the passage should be played Largo. The word is Largo. Largo. L-A-R-G-O. Largo. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller number 75, Thavon Bhutani. He's from Austin, Texas, and he's currently in the third grade. The word is Raymate. Could you please repeat the word? Could you keep your hands up? Yeah. Yeah. The word is Raymate. Raymate. Repeat the pronunciation once more. Raymate. The word is pronounced Raymate. 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 Uh, could you repeat that? Yes, it's pronounced Raymate. Raymate? Raymate, yes. Um, could I have the definition? Sure. Raymate means characterized by the presence of branches. Um, could I have the language of origin? Yes, you may. It is Latin plus English. Um, would you use the word in a sentence? Sure. Cynthia has a small deciduous shrub in her backyard with straight, raymate, and orthotropic roots. Raymate. Raymate. R A M A T E. Raymate. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 76, Celine Ugenbayar. She's from Lincolnshire, Illinois, and is in the fourth grade. Your word is unforeseeable. Unforeseeable. Um, can I have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation of the word is unforeseeable. This word's an adjective, comes from three Middle English parts. It means incapable of being anticipated or expected. Sarah wondered to what extent should one bear responsibility for the un unforeseeable consequences? Um, unforeseeable. U-N-F-O-R-E-S-E-E-A-D-L-E, unforeseeable. That is correct. 
Next, we have Speller 82. Uh, Speller 82 is Tankilun Dava Jargal. She's from Northbrook, Illinois, and she's in the second grade. Your word is biodegradable. Biodegradable? Mm -hmm. Can I have all the information, please? Sure. The word is biodegradable. There are no alternate pronunciations. This word is an adjective, comes from the first part's Greek, and the next two parts are Middle English. Of a substance, of a substance or object, it means capable of being decomposed by bacteria or other living organisms. Andrew's research focused on creating biodegradable plastics that would solve the worldwide plastic pollution problem. The word is biodegradable. Could you repeat the word, please? Yep. The word is biodegradable. Biodegradable? Repeat the pronunciation once more. Biodegradable? Yes. Biodegradable. B I O D E G R A D E A B L E. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B I O D E G R A D A B L E. But good job. Thank you so much. All right, our next speller is speller 86, Viraj Chatterjee. He's from Allen, Texas, and is currently in the fourth grade. Your word is acclimatize. <clears throat> acclimatize? Mm -hmm. May I have all the information? Sure. The word can be pronounced acclimatize or acclimatize. It's a verb, comes from French. It means to adapt to a new temperature, altitude, climate, environment, or situation. The US Olympic team was in Beijing one month before the games to acclimatize themselves to the new environment. The word is acclimatize, also pronounced acclimatize. Acclimatize, A-C-C-L-I, M A T I Z E. Climatize. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller 96. Speller 96 is Arnavi Mineni, and she is in the third grade and is from Austin, Texas. Hi. Hi. Your word is indecipherable. Indecipherable. Am I um sorry? Um, can you please pr repeat the word? Yeah. The word is indecipherable. Can I please have all the information? Sure. The word's pronounced indecipherable, indec indecipherable, indecipherable, or indecipherable. It's an adjective. Uh comes from Middle English plus Latin plus another Middle English part that's also derived from French. It means that cannot be interpreted or impossible to determine the meaning of. Example sentence is, the carvings on the rock were indecipherable as they were written in a language a thousand years ago. Indecipherable. Indecipherable. Um, can I please have the definition again? Sure. It means uh, impossible to determine impossible to determine the meaning of indecipherable. Okay. I N D I C I F E R A B L E indecipherable. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is I N D E C I P H E R A B L E. Good job. Thanks for coming. Thank you. 
Our last speller this round is speller 99, Nikhil Gunta. He's from Fort Collins, Colorado, and is currently in the third grade. I'm ready. Your word is lossy. Can you please repeat it again? Yep, the word is lossy. Could I please have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation is lossy. The word is a noun, Hindi from Sanskrit. It's an Indian beverage made of yogurt or buttermilk, water, and spices that is, that is served either sweet or salted. Could you Hurry please drink, repeat? Oh, um, I'll just read the sentence. Hari drank cold frothy lassi to rejuvenate himself on a hot summer afternoon. The word is lassi. Could you please repeat it again? Yep, lassi. Lassi, L-A-S-S-I, lassi. That is correct. All right, that is the end of the first round. Congratulations, all spellers. You all did amazing. Now, I know during breaks, it can get kind of quiet and weird. So, and for the people watching on Facebook, we're going to be doing trivia in between the breaks. So, um, you know, just to keep you guys, to keep everyone entertained. Um, so, Shobha, do you want to quickly share the, the screen, the trivia questions? Huh. So, our first trivia question is, I know a lot of, the spellers in RB are pretty young. They're all under the you know under fourth grade and below, uh, but there's even younger spellers too. So one of the trivia questions we have is who is the youngest competitor in the Scripps National Spelling Bee? Uh, the options are A. Akash Vakut Koti, B. Edith Fuller, C. Shiram Hadwar, D. Jacques Bailey. Um, and so if you are you know watching on Facebook, feel free to comment it in the Facebook live stream. Um, and for any spellers who are here during the break, who have gotten back early, we can ask them. Um, and uh, we'll just give everyone a minute to read the question. And then it looks like Caden might have an answer for us if he wants to give it a shot. Do you want to unmute and give it a shot, Caden? Yeah, I think it's Akash Vukoti. Okay. Any, any other suggestions? Anch, do you want to go? I think it's Edit Fuller. Okay. Um, okay, how about this? So how about this? We'll just do a quick one. So I'll go through the options and raise your hand if you think this is right. So raise your hand if you think it was A, Akash. Okay. Raise your hand if it's B, Edith. Okay, raise your hand if it's C, Shriram. And raise your hand if it's D, Jacques. Okay. Do you want to go to the next slide, Shoba? Can we have the answer first? Yes, the next slide will have the answer. Oh, maybe one too many. Okay, and the right answer is Edith Fuller when she was five years old. So she qualified when she was five years old and she competed when she was six. Um, but yeah, good playing. I think we might get started soon. Yeah, so takeaways, you can be young and you can still be a great speller. All right, so I think we can get started with the next round. Does that sound good to everybody? Give me a thumbs up if that sounds good. Awesome, awesome, perfect. So uh, just to give you some stats on the last round, there were five spellers eliminated. So all of them have tied for 12th place. Um, and now there's 11 spellers remaining. And we're gonna get started with the next speller, speller number two, Pervik, he's here. And also, one thing we're going to do perfect before you spell is when spellers, when you are called to spell, say like hi or say something to Navneet. That way he knows that you're ready to spell. Does that sound good? Uh, okay. Okay, perfect. So, Praveek, we'll get started with you, speller number two. Um, one fun fact about uh, Praveek is that his favorite subject uh, in school, or wait, yeah, his favorite subject in school is science. So, Praveek, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Your word is hieroglyphic. Can you please repeat the word? Yep. The word is hieroglyphic. Hieroglyphic? Hieroglyphic. Hieroglyphic. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you please have all the information? 
Sure. The word can be pronounced hieroglyphic or hieroglyphic. It's an adjective from Greek parts. Or no, um, never mind. It's it's an adjective. It's Middle French from Latin from Greek, and it means relating to a system of characters in the ancient Egyptian right. Let me repeat the definition also, sorry. Uh, relating to a system of characters in the ancient Egyptian system of writing, um, which are for the most part recognizable pictures of objects. A sentence is, the hieroglyphic text above the figure's headdress were eroded and difficult to discern. Hieroglyphic. Hieroglyphic. H-Y-O-R-O-G-L-Y-P-H-I-C, hieroglyphic. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is H-I-E-R-O-G-L-Y-P-H-I-C. All right, our next speller is Adarsh Venkanagiri, speller 11. And fun fact about him is that his favorite subject in school is math. Hi. Hi. Your word is heliophile. Heliophile, my definition? Sure. Second, heliophile refers to one attracted or adapted to sunlight. Um, heliophile, may I have um, all the information? Repeat the pronunciation as you heard it. Heliophile. Yes, heliophile, I'll give you all the information. Uh, the only pronunciation is heliophile. It's a noun. It's Latin from Greek plus French. It means one attracted to or adapted to sunlight, specifically an aquatic alga adapted to attain maximum exposure to sunlight. Sheila spent the day calling herself a heliophile until she got a sunburn. The word is heliophile. Heliophile. Um, does this word come from the Greek root helio, meaning sun? Yes. Does this word come from the Greek root phil, meaning love? Yeah. Heliophile. H E L I O P H I L E. Heliophile. That is correct. Thank you. All right, next up we have speller number 23, Gia. Gia's favorite subjects in school are math and science. Hi. Hi. Your word is insubordination. Insubordination. Can I have the definition, please? Sure. Insubordination refers to defiance of authority. Um, can I have the rest of the information, please? Sure. The word can be pronounced insubordination or insubordination. It's a noun. It's probably from French. And in a sentence, the corporal was discharged from the military due to insubordination. Insubordination. Mm -hmm. I N S U E O R D I N A T I O N. Insubordination. That is correct. Amazing. Our next speller is speller 34, Shashank Palla. And his favorite subject in school is math. Hi. Hi. Your word is decoction. Um, can you repeat the word? Yes, the word is decoction. Um, can I please have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation of the word is decoction. The word is a noun. It's from Middle English, from Middle French, or Late Latin. It's the act or process of boiling, usually in water, so as, to, so as to extract the flavor or active principle. In a sentence, Josh made his favorite, his famous chamomile tea through decoction, where he boiled the chamomile in water to extract the flavor. The word is decoction. Decoction. The pronunciation. Decoction. Decoction, yes. D-E-C-O-C. E-I-O-N, decoction? That is correct. 
Up next, we have Speller 41, Cushy. Cushy's favorite subject in school is history. I'm ready. Your word is kleptocracy. Can you repeat the word? Yep, the word is kleptocracy. Kleptocracy, can I have the definition? Sure, it's a government characterized by rampant greed and corruption, kleptocracy. Kleptocracy, can you use it in a sentence? Sure, the small country's kleptocracy was the root of all its financial struggles, kleptocracy. Kleptocracy, can I have the origin? Sure. The first part is Greek and the second part is Middle French and Late Latin. Kleptocracy. Kleptocracy, can you use it in a sentence? Sure. The small country's kleptocracy was the root of all its financial struggles. Kleptocracy. Kleptocracy. Can Wait, repeat the pronunciation once more. Kleptocracy. Correct, yeah, go on. Kleptocracy. K L E P T O C R a C Y kleptocracy. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 59, Caden Sirurak, and his favorite subject in school is English. Good Hi. choice. Hi. Your word is apoplectic. Apoplectic. Can I have all the information, please? Sure. The word is apoplectic. That's the only pronunciation. It's an adjective and it comes from French or Latin. The definition is extremely angry or furious. In a sentence, the robber was apoplectic with rage when the cashier refused to give him the money. Apoplectic. Apoplectic. Can I have the root? That's not a question we can answer, but if you think you know the roots, you can ask them. Well, what's the language of origin? French or Latin. All right. Can you repeat the word? Mm -hmm. Apoplectic. Apoplectic. A P A P L E C T I C. Apoplectic. So close. The spelling is A P O P L E C T I C. Great job. All right, next up we have Speller 65. Speller 65, Samhita Gajula. Her favorite subject in school is math. Hi. Hi. Your word is stymieing. Can you say the word again? Mm -hmm. Stymieing. Can you give me all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation of the word is stymieing. It's a verb, it's perhaps from Scots plus English. Stymieing means to be an obstacle to or to prevent the advancement or success of. Playing politics with this very important issue, senators are stymieing the development of transportation infrastructure. The word is stymieing. Stymieing? Stymieing, yes. S T Y M I I N G stymieing. I'm sorry. The correct spelling is S T Y M I E I N G. Our next speller is speller seventy five, Devon Bhutani, and his favorite subject in school is science. Hi. Hi. Could you keep your hands visible? Okay. Your word is dissident. Dissident. Um, could I have the definition? Sure. Uh, well, before that, could you repeat the pronunciation of the word just to make sure you're hearing it right? Dissident. Dissident, yes. Uh, a dissident is a person that is not agreeing to official policy. Dissident. Mm. Dissident, could I have the language of origin? Sure. Dissident is Latin. Mm. Dissident. Mm -hmm. D-I-C-I-D-E-N-D. -I -I -D -D. Dissident. 
I'm sorry. The correct spelling is B I S S I B E N T. Great job. Next up, we have speller 76, Celine Uganbayar. Uh, Celine's favorite subject in school is art. Hi. Hi. Your word is bouquet. Okay, can I have um, all the information? Mm -hmm. The word is bouquet, but it can also be pronounced bouquet. It's a noun. It's derived from French. It refers to flowers picked and fastened together in a bunch. Henry was presented with a bouquet of flowers and a gift voucher after winning the regional spelling bee. Bouquet, bouquet. Um, bouquet. B O U Q U E T, okay. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 86, Faraj Chatterjee, and his favorite subject in school is science. Hi. Hi. Your word is concessible. Can you repeat that? Yep, concessible. May I have all the information? Sure. The word is concessible, no other pronunciations. It's an adjective. It's from the first part's French and the second part is Middle English. It means capable of being granted as a right or privilege. In a sentence, the auditor determined that the proposed tax claims are concessible rights under a current tax code. Again, the word is concessible. Concessible. C O N C E S S A B L E. So close. The correct spelling is C O N C E S S I B L E. Great job. The next speller is speller 99, Nikhil Ganta. Nikhil's favorite subject in school is math. Hi. Hi. Your word is scintillate. Um, could I please have all the information? Sure. The word is scintillate, no alternate pronunciations. It's a verb, it's from Latin. It means to gleam or emit quick flashes as if throwing off sparks. In a sentence, the river is the city's greatest asset. The city scintillate and dazzle. The word is scintillate. Scintillate. S C I N T I L L A T E. That is correct. All right, that is the end of that round. So we have six spellers remaining, five spellers misspelled, which means that the um, all the spellers who misspelled in this round are seventh place, which means that you will all be getting a cash prize of $150. So congratulations, you all. Fantastic job. And yes, we, we hope to see you next year. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll take a small five minute break again for, um, for everyone to take a break. So it's 43 right now. Let's come back around 48. We'll run trivia again during this break too. So if you want to stay and watch that. Sorry, very quick. Pravik, is there a question? So do we uh, get out if uh, we misspelled the word now? Yeah, if you misspelled the word, um, you can leave this Zoom call and feel free to watch the B on the Spell Pundit Facebook if you want to watch the rest of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to run trivia again um, for all of those watching at home uh, on Facebook Live. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so for everyone who's here, both in the room and on Facebook Live, which state has the most amount of National Spelling Bee winners? A, California, B, Pennsylvania, C, Texas, and D, Ohio. Um, so what we're going to do is, again, I know there's a lot of people still on break, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll take some answers uh, when Okay, so what, what I'll do is I'll read out all the options and then raise your hand if you think that's the right option. 
So if you think it's option A, California, B, Pennsylvania, C, Texas, D, Ohio. Okay, so we have a pretty split crowd, pretty split crowd. Um, let's see, we're gonna move on and drum roll please. Okay, I see some, some drum rolls, thank you. Okay, and the right answer is C, Texas. And they had 14 champions. So I don't know what they're putting in the water in Texas, but uh, it's uh, helping get some national spelling bee winners. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, how many entries are there in the Merriam-Webster Unabridged Dictionary? So raise your hand if you think it's A, 120,000, B, 472,000, C, 3.5 million, or D, 15,000. Okay, so it looks like we had a lot of people say 472,000, and that is correct, which is both good and bad for all spellers. Good, because there's a lot of words to learn. Bad, because there's a lot of learns to, uh, words to learn. And Shiva, when are we going to be done with the break? Do you want me to do one more? Um, I think we're good. Let's start to have people come back in a couple minutes. And note, there will be no award for winning trivia, just ultimate bragging rights. All right, spellers, any questions before this next round starts? Is everyone good? Okay, just a quick note. If Again, if you misspell in this round, just make sure to stay on the Zoom call until the end of the round so that we can, if we need to do any tiebreakers after this point or if we need to um, announce anything for you, just make sure you stay on until the end of the round. All right, everyone's back. So let's go ahead and get started with round three. Awesome. Or yeah, spellers, are all of you ready? All right, Trace, take it away. Yeah, perfect. So to start out round three, we have speller number 11, Adarsh Ben Kanagari. Um, so um, Adarsh's favorite word is bibliophile. Hi. Hi. Your word is sibilance. For the word against? The word is sibilance. This word also has a near homonym, so I'd be careful about the information. But ask me. Me all the information. Sure. Sibilance or sibilance. The word is a noun. It's Latin plus English. It means of, characterized by or producing a hissing sound like that of the s sound. The silence in the hall was broken by the sibilance of mass sniffing. Sibilance. Sibilance. S I B I L A N C E. Sibilance? That is correct. Thank you. Hey, our next speller is speller 23, Gia Bavsar, and her favorite word is Buddha Tata. Hi. Hi. Your word is noctodiurnal. Um, can you repeat it? Sure. The word is noctodiurnal. Um, can I have the definition, please? Sure. Comprising a sequence of day and night, noctodiurnal. Um, can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, yep. New Latin plus Middle English. Um, does it come from the Latin root noct, meaning night? Yes, it does. Um. Can you repeat the language of origin? It's New Latin plus Middle English, derived from Latin. Noctodiurnal. N O C T O D I U R N A L, noctodiurnal. I'm sorry, so close. The correct spelling is N O C T I D I U R N A L. 
All right. Um, the next speller is speller number 34, Shashank Pala. Um, Shashank's favorite word. Luckily, he doesn't have to spell this word, but his favorite word is Numano Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis. Okay. Hi. Hi. Your word is spelsiform. Can I please have all the information? Mm -hmm. The word can be pronounced falsiform or falsiform. The word is an adjective. It comes from two Latin parts. It means having the shape of a sickle. In a sentence, the falsiform ligament is a thin fibrous structure that connects the anterior part of the liver to the ventral wall of the abdomen. Falsiform. Falsiform. F A L C I F O R M. Falsiform. That is correct. Amazing. Our next speller is speller 41, Kushiko Timokala, and her favorite word is schadenfreude. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, your word is battle door. Can you repeat the word? Battle door. Battle door. Can I have the definition? Sure. A battle door is a light, flat bat or racket. It's used in striking a shuttlecock. shuttlecock. The word is battle door. Battle door. Can I have the language of origin? Sure. Middle English from probably Old Provencal from Latin. From Latin. Battle door. Can you use it in a sentence? Sure. Robert threw his battle door across the court. Battle door. Battle door. Battledore. Can you repeat the origin? Sure. Battledore is Middle English from probably Old Provencal from Latin. Does this word have any alternate pronunciations? Just the one. Battledore. Battledore. B A T T L E D O R. Battledore. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Her spelling is B-A-T-T-L-E-D-O-R-E. -E. Good job. Thank you. All right, up next we have speller number 76, Celine. Um, Celine's favorite word is hors d'oeuvre. Mm -hmm. Your word is funipendulous. Um, can I have all the information? Sure. The word is funipendulous, funipendulous, or funipendulous. Those are the different ways of pronouncing it. Uh, this word's an adjective. It's from Latin. It means suspended by a rope or a cord. The funipendulous decorations arranged for the festival are very beautiful. Again, the word is funipendulous. Funipendulous. Repeat the pronunciation as you heard it. Funipendulous. That's one of the pronunciations. Funipendulous. Yes. Funipendulous. F U N A T E N D U L O U S. Funipendulous. So close. The correct spelling is F U N I P E N D. U L O U S. Great job. Keep spelling. Hey, and our last seller for this round is speller 99, Nikhil. And his favorite word is accentuate. I'm ready. Your word is lapidiculous. Could you please repeat again? Mm -hmm. Lapidiculous. Could I please have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation of the word is lapidiculus. It's an adjective. It comes from IS International Scientific Vocabulary from Latin. Of an insect, it means living under stones. Uh, in a sentence, Peter was bit by lapidiculus scorpion who tried to overturn a large stone in the, gar in the garden. Lapidiculus. Can you please repeat it again? 
Yes. Lapidiculus. Lapidiculus? Lapidiculus. Repeat the word once more. Lapidiculus. Lapidiculus, correct. Lapidiculus. L A P I D I C O L O U S. Lapidiculus. That is correct. All right, fantastic job, spellers. We have six spellers start at this round. We have three spellers who misspelled in this round. And all of you will be getting fourth place in the B. So that is a $250 cash prize. Congratulations, you all. And for the three spellers that we have remaining, the three of you, so this will be Adarsh, Shashank, and Nikhil. We will basically have the three of you keep going and uh, compete for first, second, and third place from here on out. So we're going to take a short five minute break just so that all of you can get ready to, to start spelling off and uh, judges feel free to take a break as well and then we'll kick off in a few minutes if you misspelled should you leave now so for all of those watching on facebook live uh we're going to do trivia again for the next couple of minutes while the top three spellers get ready okay i think people can see my screen or no it's loading okay Perfect. So uh, this one, I think, is a tough one. Uh, prior to what would later go on to be the Scripps National Spelling Bee in 1925, what organization held a nationwide spelling bee in 1908? Um, so we'll just, you know, if you're watching on Facebook Live, feel free to just comment in the live stream. Um, the options are the US Congress, Department of Education, the National Spelling Association, or D, the National Education Association. So give you a minute to think. And then the, the right answer is D, the National Education Association. So in 1908, there was a, a girl from Cleveland, M Marie Golden, who won. And this was before the Scripps National Spelling Bee in 1925. And I think we've, oh, never mind. You might have seen the answer. But uh, this one is a math question. So we wanted to combine it. We're probably not going to get enough time to. But if you take the longest word in the English language, multiplied by the number of letters in the English language, and then divided by the number of years, the national spelling is operated. So it's a very tricky question. Um, so wouldn't you do like 189,000 times 270,000 or something like that? And then. Wow, I mean, I didn't expect you to get it so quickly. But uh, yeah, so you would basically take the longest uh, word in the English language, which was, I think, Shashank's favorite word, uh, at 45 letters. So by... 45 times uh, 26 divided by 98 or 97? I think it's divided by 94, actually. So the right answer is 12. So you guys were told that. Oh, yeah, because they didn't have it in 2020. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I think we're the break's almost over. So if you were able to get that tricky one, I think the rest of this stuff is going to be pretty easy. Shoba? All right, fantastic. Are the three of you ready for the next round? Okay. Judges, are we ready? All right. So the first speller of this round will be speller number 11. Adarsh Vena, uh, sorry, uh, Venkanagari. Um, and Adarsh's favorite book is Percy Jackson, Heroes of Olympus, The House of Hades, book four. Not books one, not books two, but books four. Hi. Hi. Your word is folliculose. Say the word again. Mm -hmm. Folliculose. We have all the information. Sure. The word can be pronounced folliculose or folliculose. It's an adjective, New Latin plus English. It means containing small anatomical cavities. The folliculose cells are loosely surrounded by a thin reticulated black epithelium. Folliculose. Folliculose. Can I go again? Yes, folliculose. 
Torculos. Torculos. F O L L I C U L O S E. Torculos. That is correct. Thank you. Awesome. Our next seller is seller 34, Shashank, and his favorite book or books are Dogman and Lord of the Fleas. Your word is gerontology. Gerontology. May I please have all the information? Mm -hmm. Gerontology, 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 gerontology are the pronunciations. The word is a noun, comes from international scientific vocabulary from Greek elements, scientific study of the phenomena of aging and of the problems of the aged. The professor of gerontology, the professor of the gerontology department conducted research about Alzheimer's disease using senior citizens as participants. The word is gerontology. Gerontology, um, can you repeat the origin? Sure, comes from international scientific vocabulary from Greek parts. Gerontology. G E R O N T O L O G Y. Gerontology? That is correct. All right. Uh, the next speller is Nikhil Ganta. And uh, Nikhil's favorite book is also one of my favorite books, Aragon. I'm ready. Great. Your word is cancriverous. Could I please have all the information? Sure. The word can be pronounced cancriverous or cancriverous. It's an adjective, comes from New Latin, from Latin. It means feeding on crustaceans. The Central American raccoon is cancriverous. Cancriverous. Create. Wait, could you please repeat again? Yeah. Cancriverous. Cancriverous. Mm -hmm. Cancriverous. Repeat the pronunciation once more. Cancriverous. Mm -hmm. Cancriverous. C A N C R I V O R O U S. Cancriverous. That is correct. All right, let's see, end of that round, first perfect round of our B, congratulations. Let's go straight into our next round. So we are now on round five. Okay, speller 11, Adarsh Ben Kanagari. Uh, his uh, hobbies include reading, writing, skiing, hiking, playing piano, table tennis, and board games. So busy B outside of the B. Hi. Hi, uh, your word is formicarium. Formicarium, mail information? Sure, formicarium, formicarium, formicarium. It is a noun, comes from medieval Latin, it refers to an anthill or ant nest, especially an artificial ant nest ar arranged for observation or study of the activities of the insects. The scientists gathered around the formicarium after hearing about an unusual activity from the ants. The word is formicarium. My language of origin again? Um, yeah, it is from medieval Latin. Okay. Does this word come from the Latin root area meaning place? Mm. Yes, it does. Formicarium. F O R M I C A R I U M. Formicarium. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 34, Shashank, and his hobbies include playing chess and playing the piano. Hi. Hi. Your word is phylogeny. Phylogeny. May I please have all the information? Sure. The word can be pronounced phylogeny or phylogeny. It's a noun. 
It's international scientific vocabulary but from Greek parts. It refers to the evolution of a race or genetically related group of organisms as distinguished from the development of the individual organism. In a sentence, the, phylo the phylogeny will serve to explain the emergence of many different world philosophies. Phylogeny. Phylogeny. T-H-Y-L-O-G-E-N-Y. Phylogeny. That is correct. The next speller is speller 89, Nikhil Ganta. Uh, Nikhil's hobbies include reading and skiing. I'm ready. Your word is sigillography. Can I please have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation is sigillography. It's a noun. It's French from Greek. It refers to the study of seals. Carolina is studying sigillography as part of her medieval studies degree. Sigillography. Um, could I please have the definition again? Yep, it's a study of seals. S could you use it in a sentence? Sure. Carolina is studying sigillography as part of her medieval studies degree. Sigillography. Let me modify the origin once. It's French from Latin plus Greek. It's sigillography, right? Sigillography is the word, though. Yes. Sigillography. C I G I L O G R A P H Y. Sigillography. I'm sorry. The correct spelling is S I G I L L O G R A P H Y. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so with that round, we have one speller who misspelled in this round. That is speller 99, Nikhil. Nikhil, we, uh, congratulations, first of all, on, on this accomplishment, and you did a fantastic job today. So because of the third place finish, we will be giving you a $500 cash prize. So congratulations. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> and from there, Spellers uh, or Shashank and others, do you both want a break or should we just go straight in the spell off? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. All right. I like it. Ready. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, Spellers from here, what we're going to do is for the both of you, we will be giving you, um, you'll essentially be spelling off here. So, um, we'll do less of the between round transitions and we'll basically have you both spell in order and within 25 words if one of you misspells and the other one spells correctly um and then you do a championship word that speller will be crowned as the champion and if both of you spell through 25 words and we don't declare any champion then we will declare you both co-champs does all of that make sense okay all right Let's let's start then with this next round, round six. Speller number 11, Adarsh uh, Venkanagari. Um, his role model is his mom. Hi. Hi. Your word is thalassocrat. And the word again? Yep, thalassocrat. information? Sure. The word is thalassocrat. It's a noun. The first part is Greek and the second part is Greek derived French. It refers to one who has maritime supremacy. In a sentence, the thalassocrat decided to embark on the adventure of maritime battle. Thalassocrat. The, um, word again? Thalassocrat. Hey, one more time. Mm -hmm. Thalassocrat. Thalassocrat. Mm -hmm. Thalassocrat. Mm 
30 seconds. Okay. The Lassocrat. T H A L A S S O C R A T. The Lassocrat. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, hey, our next speller is speller 34, Shashank, and when he grows up, he wants to be a neurosurgeon. Hi. Hi. Your word is caballero. Um, can I please have all the information? Sure. The word is caballero, caballero. Yeah, caballero. Can you see your hands in the frame, please? Mm -hmm. uh, caballero or caballero were the two main pronunciations, or two pronunciations. It's a noun. The word is Spanish. It refers to a knight or cavalier. Ben wore the uniform of a caballero, caballero from the early 19th century for the international fashion contest. Um, yeah. Um, the pronunciation of the word. Caballero? Yes, caballero or caballero. Caballero. T A B A L L E R O. Caballero. That is correct. All right, let's move on to our next round, round seven. Speller 11, Adarsh, Venkanagari. Hi. Hi. Your word is tarragon. Tarragon. May have all the information. Repeat the pronunciation once more. Tarragon. Yes, tarragon. Yes. Uh, the word can be pronounced tarragon or tarragon. It's a noun. It's Middle French from Medieval Latin from Arabic. It's a small European perennial woodworm grown for its aromatic foliage that is used in cooking. Martha added a strong mustard sauce flavored with tarragon to the chicken dish. The word is tarragon. Tarragon. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Tarragon or a tarragon. What is the word again? The word again? Is that what you asked for? Yeah. Tarragon, also pronounced tarragon. Thirty seconds. Tarragon. T A R R A G O N Tergon. That is correct. Thank you. Next up, scholar thirty-four, Shoshak. Hi. Your word is alleracious. Did you say something? I didn't hear you clearly. Can you repeat the word? Sure. The word is all oracious. All oracious? Mm -hmm. Can I please have all the information? Yes. Only pronunciation is could all we, oracious. Could we have you keep your hands in the frame? The only pronunciation is all oracious. It's an adjective. It's from Latin. It means having the qualities or nature of a cooker for cookery. Robert investigated the, the effect of vigor level in the performance of six oleraceous species seeds. The word is oleraceous. Oleraceous. O L E R A C E O you asked all racious? That is correct. All right, end of another perfect round. Let's move on to round eight. Speller 11, Adarsh Venkanagari. Your word is colabent. Say the word again. Colabent. Colabent? Yes. May I have all the information? Mm -hmm. 
Colebent or Colebent are the two pronunciations. It's an adjective from Latin. It means collapsing in the middle, sunken or falling in. Tom tried to remove the Colebent termite nest on the wall with a trowel. The word is Colebent. Colebent. Are there any um, alternate pronunciations? Colebent. It's pronounced either Colebent or Colebent. By the origin? Uh, it comes from Latin parts. By the origin? Yes, Colebent or Colebent. 30 seconds. Colebent. C O L. E B I N T Colebent. I'm sorry. The correct spelling is C O L L A B E N T. Let's go to speller thirty-five. Shashank. Hi. Hi. Your word is polycrest. Polycrest. Mm -hmm. Polycrest. May I please have all the information? Yes, the word is polycrest. No alternate pronunciations. The word is a noun. It's from medieval Latin. It's a drug of drug. It's a drug medicine of value as a remedy in several diseases. The research student wants to invent a cure, a cure all polycrest. The word is polycrest. Um, Repeat the pronunciation of the word as you heard polycrest. it. Polycrest. Polycrest, yes, polycrest. Um, can you please repeat the origin? Yes, polycrest is medieval Latin from Greek parts. Um, but this comes from the Greek poly, meaning many. Yeah. Okay, P O L Y C R. E S T polycrest. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is P O L Y C H R E S T. All right, since both of you misspelled in that round, both of you are still in the B. So let's get started with round nine with the both of you. Let's start with speller 11, others. Hi. Your word is Derek. Derek, we have all the information? Yes, the word can be pronounced Derek or Derek. It's a noun. It an, comes from an English name. The, it refers to the framework or tower over a deep drill hole for supporting the tackle for boring or for hoisting and lowering. Due to improvements in technology, the size of a typical Derek has decreased by more than 50%. The word is Derek. Um, are, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, it can be pronounced Derek or Derek. Repeat the word as you heard it. Derek? Yes, Derek. Derek. D. Um, Derek. D. E R R I C K. Derek. That is correct. Thank you. Next, we have speller thirty-four, Shashank Paula. Hi. Hi. Your word is orismology. Orismology. Orismology, yes. Orismology. May I please have all the information? Sure. It can be pronounced orismology or orismology. It's a noun. First part is Greek, the second part or it's Greek plus English. It's a science of defining technical terms of a particular subject or field of study. The legal assistant had to learn the orismology and jargon related to litigation. The word is orismology. Orismology. 
Repeat the pronunciation. Orismology. Yes, orismology. O R Y S M O L O G Y. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is O R I S M O L O G Y. Great job. All right, uh, Shashank, don't leave yet. Um, what we're going to do from here is others, if you get your next word correct, you will be the champion. And if you misspell your word, we'll bring Shashank back and have you both continue to spell. So, any questions about that? All right. Then let's get started with this next round. Judges, do you need a minute? Are you good? Okay, sounds good. Then let's get started with the next round here for Speller 11. Okay, your word is scatoriant. Read the word again? Scatoriant. May, may have all the information. Scatoriant, no alternate pronunciations. Scatoriant is an adjective. It comes from Latin. It means gushing forth, overflowing, effusive. The rivers are scatoriant during monsoon season. The word is scatoriant. What's the word again? Scatoriant. Scatoriant. Repeat the pronunciation once more. Scatoriant. I'm going to repeat it once. It's scaturient. 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 Yes. Thirty seconds. Scaturient. S. C A T U R. Uh, ENT, Scaturient. That is correct. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Congratulations to our champion, Adarsh Venkanagari, on the incredible achievement. Um, you must be Scaturient with emotions right now after mm -hmm. the win. Um, would you like to say a few words about your win and thank anyone if you know anyone's watching at home? Yes. Um, I'd like to thank. Um, my parents um, for being supportive, like especially my mom for like teaching me all the like, all like my roots and uh, like introducing me to spelling bees. Um, and I would like to um thank my teachers for being um so like kind and like supportive. Awesome! Thank you, others, and congratulations on your win. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Shashank, would you like to say anything as well? Um, I'd like to thank my mom for teaching me. Um, yeah, that's it. That sounds good. That sounds good. Well, thank you both so much. Um, congratulations. You both did fantastically. And your parents must also be very, very proud. So what we'll do here is very quickly, um, Shashank, because, or for your second place finish at our, our Spell Pundit Junior National Spelling Bee, you will get a $1,000 cash prize. So you might get to use that on, um, you know, chess boards or whatever else you find fun. Um, so congratulations and others for your Spell Pundit National Spelling Bee Championship, you will get a cash prize of $2,500 to use for whatever you would like. So congratulations again, both of you. And uh, thank you also to all of our sellers who participated in this year's bee. And last but not least, we also just want to give a quick shout out to our semifinals and all of our finals judges. So uh, Simone, Navneet, Shrithika, Sharav for um all of their help and support behind the scenes to make this great to make this be a great competition so thank you all have a good night and hope to see you all next year